From previous trials, we certainly know that river roxaban is not inferior to warfarin in a variety of settings for preventing stroke and systematic or systemic embolism in patients with non-valvular atrial fibrillation. Uh, here at AHA, we have some large real-world experience to draw on now, which is always nice. And I am with uh, Winnie W. Nelson, uh, PharmD, Janssen Scientific Affairs, and she's the director of the Health Economics and Outcomes Research. Let's look at this real-world data for a second. First off, there's uh, the first one is comparative effectiveness and safety of rivaroxaban and warfarin in the NNVAF population. And you've got about 3,700 uh, people, I think, uh, 13,000 warfarin patients. I mean, this is a pretty large analysis. Where do the data come from first before we talk about the final uh, results? Yes, the data source is called Symphony. It's a database that is accumulated from providers that is sending a billing claim to the insurance and uh, we get this information that came from a very broad uh, population in the U.S. So they came from hospital, they came from clinics, and also pharmacy. And the patient type include patients who are in insured by a commercial insurance or Medicare or Medicaid. Now you're comparing the two types of drug use here, and were these really comparable characteristics populations when you're looking at them? Yes, and the way we do it is to match these patients. So we have one, every one of our rifaroxaban patients are matched with up to four warfarin patients based on the uh, characteristics. And these characteristics include their demographics, you know, age, male, female, and the clinical characteristics including uh, comorbidities, so what kind of other diseases they, they may have. So that way we can be sure that these two populations are comparable. So we've got the clinical trial data, now real-world data. What did you find? Yeah, a major finding is that the clinical endpoints that we track, which include stroke, systemic embolism, um, bleeding, and uh, venous thromboembolism, they are not significantly different between the groups. But the other endpoint that we track, which is an adherence endpoint, we show that patients who are taking rivaroxaban tend to be more persistent with their treatment than warfarin. And the reason probably would be because they don't need the monitoring? Well, in this study, we didn't, uh, we have no way to find out the reason because we, these are billing information. And so uh, that would be something that is very worthwhile for research in the future. But it is kind of exciting that, you know, you've got an equal drug and there's more adherence to the medication in this particular study, which is a large study. Adherence is very important for these patients. Uh, for AFib patients, they need to take anticoagulant for the rest of their lives. Right. So being persistent with the therapy is paramount to their care and their health. Now, the second one is real interesting, too. Hospital length of stay, does rivaroxaban reduce inpatient stay compared to warfarin among patients with NVAF? And here it's like 2,809 patients on rivaroxaban and 11,000 on warfarin. What did you find here? Yes, the finding is that patients who are given rivaroxaban in the hospital tend to be discharged sooner. And uh, we have a median difference of one day and uh, that is quite important in, in the sense that patients get to go home sooner if uh, perhaps if the choice of anticoagulant is different. Why? We also don't know why. This is another thing that we couldn't tell exactly from the data set. We just observed that those who were given rivaroxaban tend to be discharged sooner. Uh, it is important in the sense that um, longer hospitalization come with different kind of risks Correct. and it certainly could come with a cost as well. What would, I mean, I'm trying to even think of what the mechanism might be or why it might, any theories? Well, we thought that perhaps uh, patients need to be stabilized on warfarin and get their INR tested during the hospital stay and that added to the length of stay. That's phenomenal. Uh, anything else that you want to talk about in terms of these two studies? I mean, it, it's really good to get some real world data out and to uh, find out what's happening with these patients in, in a setting like that. Yeah, real world data we feel uh, is important to complement clinical trial setting because number one, we are looking at the, the information from a more diverse population than the clinical trial. It is collected when patients are treating uh, during routine care setting. And um, finally, we are also looking at endpoints that are not available in the clinical trial. Precisely. So for ours will be persistence and length of stay. Uh, we encourage that our colleagues, our physicians, will talk to the patient about their needs, 
when choosing anticoagulant, uh, that conversation is very important in picking the most appropriate option. Rifaroxaban is the most studied factor 10A inhibitor, and it is also uh, the, the anticoagulant with the broadest indication. So um, I hope that when a physician is choosing uh, and choosing a, an anticoagulant with a patient, they will take into consideration these real-world findings, such as persistence rate and length of stay. Those are two very important uh, findings. So thank you very much for joining us. And for additional information from the AHA meeting, please make sure you check us out online and in print. And for CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.